They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini boys. Hey, Mike. Matt, how are you doing? Doing well. You know, I was dragging early this morning, Mike, but I'm uh, two and a half cups in now, and I'm starting to feel charged up here in Cambridge. Got my LL Bean flannel pajamas on. A signal that fall is officially here. Chilling oh, weather, loving every second of it. How are things with you over in Japan? Yeah, I'm um, just like you, was dragging a little bit. Had a little, had to pull out a little. Ooh, boy. You know how I like a green label. label. So, um, <laughs> see, it's a tall boy, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm dragging a little bit. I'm trying to amp myself up, see if I can get through mm. this. But um, yeah, today I uh, we had a little Akiyoshi party, Ooh. takeout, uh, yakitori. That's uh, chicken skewers. It was uh, awesome. So I'm feeling a little heavy, but I'm ready to get going. Well, let's get going. Uh, as usual, Mike, we got a lot to talk about this week. And uh, we're starting off with the Chicky Wars. We got a couple new Chickies out that we got to share. First up, Ada Lawson, Mike. We have mm-hmm. a new Honey Maple L Chicky. Um Again, a sign that fall is here. Maple <sighs> coming out for the fried chicken. You can see, we got it pulled up here on screen. You can see the ripples of mm. maple syrup that run through this chicky. That nice balance between salty and sweet. Undoubtedly, a wonderful feature of this El Chicky Mike. I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this one. What are your thoughts? Same with you. I, uh, you know, we've introduced many a Chicky on the podcast, but I think this is our first one with a sweet twist to it. Right. And I'm, I'm a sweet twist sort of guy. And I know that uh, you don't mind a, a, a twist of sweet as well. Um, this is, uh, this sounds great. Like who, how could this not be good? I mean, maple syrup in the chicky, plus you got that savory taste. I'm going to get this. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm going to get this this week. I'll let you know next week on at the Gemba. I can't wait to hear about it. You know, I'm imagining they got sort of a Ron Popeil injection system set up where they're just piping these hot chickies full of sweet maple syrup that's got to be outstanding (laughs) and um not to be outdone family mart is also bringing a new family chicky to the table this one a little bit simpler the black pepper family chicky like Mm. this one they're saying they got pepper from three different countries scattered across the surface of this family chicky here you can see the clear specks of it it's a fairly coarse grind Mm. of pepper um Mm -hmm. and they're promoting not necessarily the flavor but the aroma that black pepper aroma to pair with that juicy juicy family chicky um to be honest not so excited about this one black pepper doesn't really uh, wake me up in the morning. I don't feel like I need to grab, uh, head out to Family Chicky, uh, fa- Family Mart right away to go grab this thing. But um, I don't know. Maybe you feel differently. Yeah, as you know, I'm a, a pepper maniac, and uh, if I like one pepper, I like three peppers. I <laughs> do like a pepper, and um, yeah, I got to be honest. I'm really excited because. For the past, you know, couple months, uh, they've been really going, they've been going hot. You know, we got all types hot. of, we got, like, we got the uh, Karamucho uh, mm. Fami Chicky, we got the Kaki P Fami Chicky. So I'm looking forward to this very simple, just a simple. little bit of that pepper twist. And um, yeah, no, I'm actually really excited. And um yeah, I'm a big pepper guy, and uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see where this one goes, but I can't imagine that it is anything but 
amazing. Well, you, you make a good point there. Um, Family Mart has been going big on flavor. I think the last one was the barbecue, Family Chicky. As you said, the Caramucho came before that. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that came the Kakapi, uh, Family Chicky. Uh, and consistently, those additional flavors tend to overwhelm the beauty, the natural essence right. of the Family Chicky. Uh, yeah. And so to have a more subtle flavor to pair with the Fami Chicky may be the right play here. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We got two very different things. Subtle black pepper out of Family Mart. Got the pretty robust honey maple out of Lawson. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what comes, who comes out on top there. But uh, that's the Chicky Wars for this week, Mike. As usual, it's hot, hotter than ever. Uh yeah. Chicken bean is just raging on the fried chicken battlefield. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. It's an, it's an exciting uh, combo this week. I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to hopefully be able to try both these. So, uh, mm -hmm. all right. So we got the Chicky Wars done. You know where we're heading. We're heading to the scoreboard. And by the scoreboard, that's where we look at the output at each conveni for this week. And so let's just go ahead and look at what we've got. This week, Family Mart, 61 new items. Okay. Lawson, 36. Yeah. And 7-Eleven, 80. Interesting numbers. What's your, uh, what's your first impression there? First impression, Family Mart, uh, Lawson playing right in their wheelhouse. 7-Eleven um, continues to kind of baffle me. They have no real plan, it seems. Uh, one week, we're at 120. Another, we're at 80. Yeah. Um, there's no sort of leveling happening out of 7-Eleven. And so I can only imagine the chaos happening in that product development room. Uh, <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, perhaps next week we'll have another fire hose of 120 items to sift through, or maybe we'll have another week of 80. Still 80. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. So no, I mean, uh, Blossom, Family Mart clearly have their game plan strategy together. 7-Eleven mm -hmm. continues mm -hmm. to demonstrate a sort of, uh, sort of wacky, uh, chaotic schedule of product release. Yeah, no, I agree uh, with you completely. It's, uh, yeah, Family Mart Lawson not, didn't really feel much about that, but 7-Eleven, yeah, 80, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to plot this thing, if you're a statistician, I mean, you'd just be baffled. You'd have no idea what to do. Where are we going next? No one knows. So um, yeah, yeah, there's no control limit on this. You know, this, no. thing, this thing looks like, uh, you know, an EKG for, uh, you know, somebody who's conking out on, you know, a bunch of uh, hyped up on who knows what, you know, this is, this thing's all over the place. All right. So we looked at the score. So as we do each week, we're, all, we're each going to pick up an item from each convenie that, that is interesting to us or that we want to share. And so let's just jump right in. Um, as always, we're going to start by Family Mart. And uh, this week, how about you take the reins? So let me, um, let me go ahead and share this with the viewers. Yeah, Mike, this is ramen flavored vegetables. And um, if you could allow me to read the machine translated English product description here. Sure. It is a dish that you can eat vegetables, bean sprouts, cabbage, spinach, with back fat, garlic, and pork bone soy sauce ramen-like taste. Since it, since it does not contain noodles, the carbohydrates is also modest. Um, I don't know about you, Mike, wow. but nothing pairs better with cabbage than back fat. Um, <laughs> you know, I thanks for zooming in on that. Yeah, I like my esophagus uh, greased up like a slip and slide. You know, I bet after uh, bite number three of this thing, you pop one of those pork slices into your mouth, swallow, and that thing is going to ride down your belly like Geronimo at Water Country, you know? This thing just looks absolutely outstanding. Um, and I love the health pitch as if uh, saving right. on noodles is going to help you with the back fat. So, um, yeah, super pumped about this product. Yeah, this is unexpected. I was not expecting this twist in the ramen game. 
Ramen without the noodles. That's a new one. Um, or broth, that would, for that matter. Or broth. It's just <laughs> ramen-flavored vegetables and back fat. Um, you know, I don't see this going far. I mean, people <laughs> like their noodles. I don't think they like ramen for just the, like, whatever the taste of ramen is. I think they like it for the whole noodle and soup and uh, that whole experience. No, it's it's definitely uh, an aggressive deconstruction. It is funny to think that, okay, let's take ramen and take away <laughs> everything that makes it ramen and then serve that up. Yeah, right, it's like, hey, let's... Decision. Let's let's get prime rib and um, you know we're just it's just au jus. You're just gonna drink the au jus. There's no prime rib. So uh, all right, anyways, okay. It's like prime rib and getting cream spinach. Yes, yes. Now that no. that is a more apt description. Just okay. Away. Well, all right. Nice what do you choice. got here from Family Mart? Very excited all right. to see what you got picked out here. All right, boom. I've got the crunchy noodle salad and um, also the machine translation. We've got, it is salad, which with vegetables and crunchy noodles, not available in Miyazaki and Kagoshima very pictures. Um, I don't know how well this is known, this dish, the dry crunchy noodle mm -hmm. um, salad. This is something that I just love and mm. Probably you're looking at this, you're thinking, what's going on here? You got dry noodles at the bottom, on top you got this whole mound of stuff, and then you got this sauce. Well, let me tell you what you do here. Those, no those noodles are not crunch or are crunchy, but at the end they're also pretty slick. So you're gonna take <laughs> this thing, you're gonna dump the vegetables and everything into that noodles, then you're gonna pour on top that sauce, and then you're gonna you're gonna take your chopsticks and mix this thing up, mm -hmm. and so that sauce is in everything. It's in the noodles, it's in the vegetables, and everything. And at the end, the noodles kind of are they're a little bit soft, and so then you dip in there, you take a bite, you get the slight crunchy of the noodles, but also mm -hmm. with that nice taste and the vegetables, and it's actually really refreshing. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, this is a not. I don't think this is a very widely known dish. I've only ever had it at the Combini, but um, I kind of want to introduce this. And uh, yeah, I, this is my choice for the week. What What do you think? No, this is actually new to me as well, Mike. I've not seen the crunchy noodle salad before. It definitely looks refreshing. Uh, certainly mm -hmm. something I'd want to eat on a hot summer's day. Uh, still not clear how the noodles are consumed. Do they stay crunchy after the sauce is poured on? They do, they do, but not. it's not like you're eating raw pasta. Like they're, I see. at the start, they're almost like a, a chip or something like a that. Chip. Like okay. in that sort of um, crunchiness. And then there's this mysterious uh, dish of mayonnaise, which uh, does prop up now and again, <laughs> pop up now and again. Um, <laughs> is that also commonly that, used that is also commonly used sorry I, I, I should have said that you dump that sauce then you put the mayonnaise then you mix so that mayonnaise gives it that that sort of slickness you know to slickness. slip around yep yeah fantastic no uh this is new to me and i'm grateful that you've introduced it no and uh i do see the tempura crunchy bits there anything with that on it is is obviously going to be delicious so well done this looks fantastic all right, so we're heading over to Lawson, going to your next pick. I'm going to slam it here, so boom. Yeah, Mike. Uh, this is black truffle sauce, roast beef, frozen in a bag. What? Yeah, so uh, this is actually a new series out of Lawson. This is the frozen bag series. They have quite a few of these, but, you know, Mike... What struck me about this, and I'm, you might be thinking about it already, this is pretty much frozen. This is prime rib in a bag. Wow. Uh, this is prime rib in a bag with black truffle, truffle au jus here. It's thinly sliced, naturally. We're in Japan, so it's Ooh. not the real deal. Right. But, uh, you know, I'd never got my hands on a prime rib aside from that frozen one I was given for being a foreigner at that golf tournament that I was never able to cook. 
but no, this is, this looks absolutely outstanding. I think what you're meant to do is slowly simmer this to bring it, to reheat it, mm. open the bag up and serve it. No, it, it looks absolutely outstanding. Thinly sliced roast beef with a black truffle sauce. Mm. Wow. I, this is new to me, this series. I've never seen this and I love it. This looks amazing. Oh, wow. I'd love to have this with this beer right here. Heat one of these things up and oh man, that looks great. One thing I will say is that um, roast beef and prime rib in general it comes at a premium in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. what, what would you say of roast or uh, a prime rib? How many ounces do you think you, those usually come in? In America? In America, yeah. In America. In America. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, well, you got your different cuts. Uh, probably minimum 12 ounce would be your kind of, you know, cowboy cut. And then you got your, uh, uh, you, you, you can go all the way up to a two pounder. Right. Well, right. To two pounds. Yeah. So as you see, we're looking at, we're looking at um, 87 calories. So I don't know how many ounces that would be. I'm thinking 0 0.3 for four dollars. <laughs> so, you know, this is a premium dish here. This is, um, you know, you want this with some top of the line wine or a nice beer. But um, I really like this choice and this series. Wow. Lawson again, just, I mean, thinking outside the box, this is, uh, this is really interesting. Yeah, I'm excited about it. All right, so let's head over to mine from Lawson. Here we go. Boom. Ooh. I'm talking about Ooh, the three yep. bean yep. chili mm -hmm. con carne Ooh, yeah. doria, which is a rice dish. And as you can see, that's a five grain rice in there. So, um, you know, I, uh, I love the kombini. We love the kombini. And, but one thing the kombini lacks is these sort of, you got your Chinese, you got your Japanese, you got your Italian, but outside of that, you really don't got much. So I, even just a bit of, uh, you know, wait, is chili, chili con carne would be Mexican. I think it's Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, right. So just to have this sort of variety really, uh, really interests me. And then also just the, yeah, the three bean, three types three of beans, beans. And then the, the five grain rice with the chili con carne doria. I mean, this looks really good. I, th I think that's three types of beans, although it looks like it might just be three beans. <laughs> I'm not sure. But either way, it looks pretty good. And um, I'm not, I, I've never dipped hard into the Doria, but um, I'd like to give this thing a try. Yeah, it looks outstanding. I'm a huge fan of chili. I actually ate it last night for dinner. But mm. uh, this would undoubtedly go well with a couple of tall boys and mm. maybe a nice thick chip to dip into oh, that chili. Wow. Boy, and um, I am shocked that they have the uh, the kind of whole grain or whatever kind of rice in there. That usually, um, you know, I thought you could be indicted for eating anything but white rice in Japan. So, uh, great move here by uh, Lawson to get some different kinds of rice into yeah. a conveni item. This looks great, Mike. Uh, wow, Ooh, my mouth is literally watering. Not even kidding. Yeah, yeah. And just to clarify of what Doria is, is usually it's a, <clears throat> you have cheese and some sort of like sauce or some sort of flavoring melted on top of rice. So in, underneath oh. this is rice, you usually mix that up and eat it. So I just wanted to uh, point that Thank out. Thank you so. for clarifying that. Yeah. All right. So heading over to the Wild West, <laughs> we're going to 7-Eleven and to start, we're looking at your first item here we go boom yeah mike this is oh. the uh <laughs> the hamburg curry another doria here um mm. this is a big boy mike this is a straight up dirty diaper i had to uh hop in the shower after clicking this thing uh there's no doubt that your insides are going to turn into uh chernobyl once you're done with this thing, you'll probably want to make a, a run to Costco for some bulk toilet paper before you take your first bite here. 
make sure it's the double ply. But I got to be honest, this this actually looks super good. Um, yeah. We talked about yeah. this last week on the Bento episode. I'm a huge fan of Hambagu, oh, uh, yeah. which is the perfect version of meatloaf. It's super juicy hamburg mm. patty. Um, and here it's paired with this nasty looking curry uh, with the rice to mix into it. Uh, I would be enthusiastic about slamming this with a couple of tall boys. What do you think? Uh, yeah, well, here, let me show you my choice from 7-Eleven. <laughs> Out of 80 items. Um... <laughs> Out of 80 items, uh, you know... <clears throat> Our uh, our thoughts align. Yeah, I am the same way. I was gonna say very similar to you. I this thing I think is served. Usually they tape a uh, a bag of mayonnaise on the top, but I think they 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 tape a disposable diaper on on top of this one. This thing is serious. Um, and this you know normally when you're seeing this curry, you just get that dark brown flavor. Yeah. yeah. But this thing has these. It, it looks like this is. What is that? I don't know. It's um <clears throat> some sort of green flaky uh, <laughs> seasoning there, and then it almost looks like <clears throat> if you said this was ramen, I, I would think maybe it was like a tonkotsu ra- or ton- mm. tonkotsu ramen um, pork yeah. bone broth. Um, yeah, I don't know what's inside this thing, but I know at the bottom there's that rice because this is a doria. But on top of that, you're getting through that curry and. But I agree with you as, as you know, much of a mess this thing looks to be. I mean, I, this thing does look to be really tasty. Yeah, no, it, your insides would be burning in hell after eating half, <laughs> half of this thing, but totally worth it. It looks, I would be all over that. It looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Same. 80 items to choose from. And once again, we are aligned. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. No, um, we'll have to, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the old super salary man has picked this one up. He, uh, this looks like oh, something he might be uh, absolutely interested in. So maybe we'll have to take a look at that. And uh, everyone watching, if, if you want a good look into the Kambini and their items, check out super salary demand. All right. So that closes out the scoreboard for this week. As always. Yeah. It's been a damn good time. Damn good time. Uh, can't wait till next week to see what's going on. And um, Mike, now it's on to the main story this week. And we're talking burgers. Uh, and it's a bit of a surprise here because we're talking burgers at Lawson. Um, and... <laughs> They're not messing around here, Mike. Typically, to give people the lay of the land, now most conveni do carry a burger. Mm-hmm. And you'll find them in the bakery section yeah. with all other kinds of bread. Mm-hmm. And the burger will be this sad looking thing inside of a vacuum, you know, a, a sealed plastic bag. Mm-hmm. And you open it up. And I've actually never had one because they look really gross. This looks very different Mm -hmm. we have family mart going all in in a four burger series cheeseburger the tatu tatu fish burger we got the todori egg teriyaki burger and then we got the bacon egg and cheese burger and mike the bacon egg and cheese is on sale starting next week for those who can't see this this flap of bacon here, this thing looks like a Saint Bernard with its tongue sticking out here. That's how big this piece of bacon is. And then it's got an fried egg on top of that thing with a slice of American cheese. Mike, this is the real deal. It looks like Lawson is going in on burgers. Mm-hmm. Kind of a shot at the bow of uh, McDonald's, Moss Burger, etc. Here, uh, I'm I'm shocked, frankly speaking. Quite frankly, frankly speaking. Um, <laughs> what are What are your thoughts on this? All right, yeah. Um, so I have dipped into the burger section at the Conveni before, and 
like you said, I'm not impressed. You know, you get that vacuum sealed pack, mm -hmm. maybe you put it in the microwave, you heat it up and you eat it. But, but the problem is when you get that, when that's how you eat it, when you microwave it, the bun gets so sort of soggy. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah. And what I'm liking here is it looks like they've got a serious, a real bun here. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as you, with the bacon, uh, with the bacon burger, they've even got sesame seeds on top sesame of there. Sesame seeds. So yep. I'm really excited because this is not something that the convenience has been able to pull off. You know, they've been pay, been able to pull off dogs, chickies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, they can, they've been able to pull it all off. But one thing they've never been able to do is the burger. And so... I'm really excited and very cautious about how this is going to be turned out. But if they can pull this off, this is going to be a game changer on par with the family chickie. Yeah, it could be, this could be a revolution here. Um, you said it best. The Kanbini just hasn't been able to pull off the burger despite their success with so many other categories of food. Yeah. And for those who don't know, I think part of the reason we haven't seen the Konbini enter the space before is because the Japanese fast food burger scene is one of the best, I'm going to say, in the world. The Japanese world. McDonald's, I'm telling you, it is a next level experience. Yeah, um, yeah. We're going to bring up some shots here in a second, but Mike, I remember, uh, you know, when I was in school in Yokohama, I didn't have a ton of money mm -hmm. uh, to spend, but one thing I treated myself to each week was a McDonald's lunch. Mm. And we're not talking about just quality. We're talking about product design and innovation. You know, we, we mentioned this before we have the big America series parts mm -hmm. one and two. These are just, uh, outstanding examples of of fast food burgers um and then also we got moss burger we got first kitchen the fast food burger scene in japan is just one of the best um what's and let's pull up mcdonald's here so people yeah, can yeah, yeah. Look. this is a, this is this is something you know well mike this is the schemey scene uh, here at uh, mcdonald's yeah see this is what this is what the convenie has to compete with here this is an outstanding product line oh geez yeah no i am um, you're exactly right like we've talked about it before but mcdonald's gets a bad rap in the states usually by in many ways justified but in japan i mean it's it really is it's like um it's like a new movie coming out you want to go yeah. and get it so when i yeah. and so they have the sort of um, the the sort of recurring items and the seasonal items, and one of them is the skimi burger, which anyone who's been to Japan um, or anybody with any sense at all knows. You know, when it gets to be about you know September October, you want to get out and look at the moon. You know, that's that's <laughs> what you want to do. You know, that's just how you spend your days. You you log out of work, you punch the clock, and then you just you're looking at the moon all night drinking some beers. So that's what this, this is every, you know, every fall you get the schemey burger and it is one of the best. And yeah, this, this time, um, actually we, you know, they run the commercials before it start. And as soon as I saw it, schemey burger was coming back when it was that time of the season, I said to my, my, we're going to McDonald's. We got to get one. We got to get the new one. You can see the new one. It's the no co fua toto schemey. Look at that thing. It's got a scrambled egg at the bottom. You got the burger, you got the cheese, you got the the, the egg, you got the bacon, and then that sauce. And that sauce. What is that sauce? Does anybody know what that sauce is? It's yeah, no, I don't I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> it's uh it's great and it's just um yeah, like the the I would say the fast food scene of burgers in Japan is on par with the ingenuity of some of the things that we cover each week in the Kombini. Yeah, we could have a whole another podcast on the burger scene at uh, fast food burger scene. I, I do want to bring up uh, at least one more, maybe two more fast mm -hmm. food options here. Uh, one of my favorites, maybe my favorite burger 
Mm. in Japan is the Moss Burger. Now, this is a brand that's not going to be known to our listeners unless they're in Japan. This is a this is a J- Japanese fast food brand. Mike, uh, let's just dig into the classic here. This is the Moss mm. Burger. It's got this fabulous bun. It's got the patty. It's got this weird, nobody quite knows, onion, white mayonnaise sauce. And then it's got this tomato yes. sauce messy tomato sauce it's so messy they have to put it in a bag so it doesn't spray all over the place you're eating like a pig out of a trough with this thing and then it's got this ridiculously thick cut slice of tomato on top this thing Mm. is the size of the burger itself they're not skimping on the tomato with that perfectly toasted bun on top moss burger it's kind of a high-end fast food chain. My yeah. goodness, I love it. Probably my yeah. favorite burger in Japan, Moss Burger. That's a good call. And that's and when now that you said that, I, I have to agree. There is nothing like the Moss Burger, the, the original. This is the classic Moss Burger right here. And, you know, it's like you said, I mean, it's a messy business, but... Um, <laughs> It's what's just great also about Japan as well is like you're seeing this in the picture and in the States, you know, you, everyone's seen those, you know, on Twitter and these blogs where it's like, this is what it looked like on the commercial and this is what it actually looked like. No, this is exactly what it's, <laughs> it's going to be perfectly lined up. You're going to get a tomato. It's not going to be like mostly white sort of, you know, the, the pulp. No, it's going to be a beautiful tomato you're gonna get this in a nice bag and oh nice call on the moss burger wow this is oh it's getting me hungry oh and i like the breakdown that they provide on the side there they do the full breakdown diagram for those watching we'll post this on twitter so you can see how this thing is stacked up but yeah um you're Mm. right mike the way this looks on the website is exactly how it's going to look when it's served on your tray. (laughs) Um, And then one more I want to bring up. Actually, um, I wasn't aware of it. So this could be an exclusive Kansai thing. And it's not even hamburgers, but I do want to bring it up because these are absolutely outstanding. This is a a fast food place called First Kitchen. Mm. And they have something called Flavor Potato, which are French fries. Not sure how they arrived at the name Flavor Potato. But what's so awesome about these is you get the bag of French fries, but you don't Mm -hmm. just order French fries. You order French fries with seasoning. So for Mm. instance, right now they have Wagyu barbecue flavor potato. So you're going to get some Wagyu barbecue seasoning and it's going to be in that bag with all those French fry soldiers. And that bag (laughs) is going to be closed when it hits you over the ah. counter and you give it a shake 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 to coat to dust to permeate all of those Ooh. french fries with the wagyu barbecue potato seasoning and then you tear off the top and you just dive in ah. it's uh one of my favorite products in japan but i didn't realize this could be a kansai exclusive thing yeah yeah no i've i've never i've never been to first Kitchen. i've heard of it before but yeah, I think it might be, uh, they don't have it out here in the, in the countryside, but um, these potatoes are, look amazing. And would you say this is a proper representation of how these potatoes look? Oh, absolutely. Look? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, French fries, that's another thing. Uh, the Convini does have it in the hot box, but they don't mm-hmm. really push it. I think this is another instance where Japan is just the fast food companies are playing at a different level when it comes to fries. Yeah. And uh, yeah, how do you compete with flavor potato here? Unless that's the only game that you're doing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like Jiro Sushi. This guy's been doing only sushi for uh, the 60 of his 80 years of life on earth. And First Kitchen's been doing flavor potato for their entire existence and not a whole lot more. So uh, mm. yeah, tough to compete with that. But um, yeah, wow. Uh, wow, here we go. Lawson, I'm sorry, Family Mart taking mm. a dip yeah. into the hamburger game. Very curious mm. to see where this is going to go. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe our listeners don't understand, but I think this is on par with the supermarkets trying to take on the company. This is a similar sort of market challenge that uh that the 
here. So this should be, yeah, really interesting to see. But uh, okay, well, speaking of news and new things related to Kambini, well, I, I hate to say, but we've got a follow-up from uh, last week. Um, as you know, we've been covering this, uh, this terrible phenomenon of people just mm. ramming their cars full speed in the Kambini. Um, and this time, unfortunately, I hate to say that this, uh, this phenomenon is not just specific to Japan, it's going international. So this week I've got a, a story here from, this is from Korea. And this is a, um, a Japanese uh, convenience store, mini stop. We don't talk about it much, but that's a Japanese convenience store. And apparently this is, this is a little bit different than what we've been talking about, but um, I'll set it up. A woman, she went into the Kambini and she wanted to have some uh, pictures from her son's uh, photography competition sent. And the, uh, it seems that the Kambini unfortunately lost those pictures. And um, Matt, uh, I, I think you, you saw what happened. Can you, you tell them what, uh, how this woman responded? Yeah. Um... We have uh, a young woman in a, it looks to be a Genesis, which is, uh, I think, Kia's luxury brand. So this is a full-size sedan, and she is all the way inside the Convini, and she is going in reverse and then forward repeatedly, rampaging through the Convini, uh, literally turning it into dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and the cops arrive on the scene totally befuddled. They have no idea what to do. They're almost, uh, they're, they're more spectators than, than uh, police as this yeah. is happening. And she is just uh, hell bent on, yeah, I mean, it looks like a tornado has just ripped through this mini stop here. And there is just nothing left inside this thing uh she has completely destroyed the entire mini stop uh i don't know if anybody was hurt uh hopefully nobody was and uh yeah yeah to think because they lost some pictures uh, <clears throat> of her child's uh contest submission yeah this is a totally overblown reaction uh to that yeah, yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's it's scary to think, you know, at least it's not the, you know, the phenomenon we we're talking about where they mean to press the brake and they press the gas. That's yeah, a little that's bit right. more sort of, you can't really predict. This one seems to be more, uh, you know, uh, have a uh, sort of bad intention involved. But um, we just want to say, you know, not just in Japan, to our Kambini brethren around yeah. the world, be careful and, you know. Head on a swivel. Yeah. yeah, take an eye, you know, keep an eye on these uh, disgruntled customers because, uh, you know, there's nothing worse in this world than somebody who can't respect the Kambini. Yeah, uh, to destroy a, a, a <laughs> landmark of the community there like that uh, yeah. is just outrageous. And like you said, this one was, uh, this one was intentional. Normally, it's just, uh, you know, poor old person hits the wrong pedal. Next thing they know, they're they're sideways or uh, you know floating in the Oden bucket. Uh, no, this one was uh, this one had bad intentions. But yeah, please everybody, like we said, head on a swivel while you're picking up your family chicky or your hamburger, whatever it is. You know, eyes open. Yep. Yep. All right, Matt. Well, uh, twenty-two episodes up. 22 episodes down. I don't think we've had one miss. Everyone 100% strike slam dunk. And I think today was the same. So um, yeah, I just, uh, to close it out here, um, just want to say thanks to all the listeners and viewers. Uh, these past couple of weeks have been on YouTube. If you like watching us, you know, let us know. If not, you know, you know, just feel free to continue listening on the, uh, the podcast app. Um, if you are listening to us on the podcast app, uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please um, share and uh, rate us because it really helps people find the show. Um, and we also have, uh, you know, our social uh, accounts as well. We've got, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 
And um, we're all under the Kambini Boys, so you can just find us there and be sure to leave a like or to share what we're doing. And if you want to be the first person to call into the show, we can you can share your Kambini memory or not even anything related to Kambini. You can just you can just say talk about anything. Um, and you can give us a call at 617-453-8207 and we will share it on the podcast. Uh, Matt, it's been a great time this week as well. Uh, you know, um, I guess I'll see you next week and, uh, hopefully I'll, uh, see you at the convening. We'll see you at the convening, Mike.